a hero before a villain. Before the series was about a red and silver humanoid titan, Ultraman was supposed to be called Bimular. The series would have circulated around a character with the ability to transform into a gigantic bird-like humanoid to battle other giant monsters and aliens that are ravaging the Earth. Tsuburaya feared audiences, namely children, would struggle deciding who to root for, so the concept was shifted into what we now know as Ultraman. The concept of a giant humanoid bird monster was recycled in episode number 20, where Ultraman squares off with a monster named Hydra. The name Bimular was given to the hero's first adversary in the premiere episode. The conceptual art for the proposed Bimular bore a strong resemblance to what later became Nakatsu's only Godzilla-type project, Gappa. Ultra 7's original color. Ultra 7 was supposed to be silver and blue. Due to the wish of toy developers, the hero's blue body was changed to red, following the color scheme that's now traditionally associated with the Ultra Heroes. It wasn't until 1998's Ultraman Gaia did Tsuburaya explore the idea of a blue Ultraman, which ultimately became Ultraman Agul. An Ultra Noticeable Knockoff. In one of many scenes that copied Ultraman Ace, episode number four of Zone Fighter showed the titular hero protecting himself from War Gilgar's flamethrower attack by forming a large barrier. As if that wasn't obvious enough, War Gilgar has Vakashem's roars, albeit in a high pitched form. Both sounds originated from Ebira's vocals, by the way. Holy future predictions, Batman! The unproduced Batman vs. Godzilla would have featured a machine that could control the weather. The concept for this weather-controlling machine was later used in 1967's Son of Godzilla. The script also would have featured Batman and Robin teaming up with Batgirl to fight the towering dinosaur. This version of Batgirl was written for the script long before the character of Barbara Gordon, aka Batgirl, was even introduced in the DC comic books. Godzilla vs. When you include the American rebranded names, there are a total of seven Showa Godzilla movies that use the Godzilla vs. title. Of course, this is debatable, as some of these movies don't include Godzilla vs. in some of their releases, like how Godzilla vs. Monster Zero is sometimes referred to as simply Monster Zero. The same applies to Godzilla vs. Gigan, which is sometimes referred to by its original American title, Godzilla on Monster Island. The earliest entry to go by this name was Godzilla vs. The Thing, this wasn't the case in Japan, where either the opposing monster's name would precede Godzilla's name, such as King Kong vs. Godzilla, or Mothra vs. Godzilla. Or a drastically different title was used altogether, such as Invasion of Astro Monster, or Big Duel in the South Seas. When going by the film's Japanese titles, the first Godzilla movie to ever use the Godzilla vs. title was 1971's Godzilla vs. Hedorah, Two prolific mistakes about Ghidorah. Despite the stories that have been shared profusely over the years, and the merchandise that's been made in honor of it, Ghidorah was not supposed to be purple with rainbow wings, as many have suggested over the years. According to Keizo Marase, this rumor stemmed from a claim that someone spotted a Ghidorah prop on the set of the monster's debut film, which looked like it had a purple body with rainbow-colored wings. Mr. Marase opined that this might have been an optical illusion due to the studio lights, as all of the Ghidorah props were gold. He should know this fact more than anyone, as he was the one who painted the Ghidorah props. 
While special effects artist Tezo Toshimitsu initially wanted the monster to be green to differentiate it from Godzilla, Mothra, and Rodan, a number of the effects crew proposed that the props would look more appealing if they were painted gold. They also felt that it would make more sense from a narrative standpoint, as the monster came from Venus, otherwise called the Gold Planet. Some have also speculated that Ghidorah was intended to be a metaphor for the threat of the nuclear arms development in China, similar to Godzilla being a stand-in for the atomic bombs that destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Director Ishiro Honda dismissed these rumors about Ghidorah in a 1992 interview, clarifying that the monster was made only to be a modern take on the mythical Yamada no Orochi. A missed dedication to Tsuburaya-san. Despite his failing health, Eiji Tsuburaya was extremely optimistic about the upcoming 1970 feature, Space Amoeba, with him even planning to serve as the special effects supervisor, while Sadamasa Arakawa, one of his protégés, would serve as director of special effects. Tragically, two days after the start of filming, Eiji Tsuburaya passed away from a heart attack on January 25th, 1970. In hopes to honor their legendary mentor, several staff members proposed that the movie should be dedicated to Mr. Tsuburaya's memory, a proposal Toho ultimately rejected. Arakawa was especially angered by this rejection, so much so that he refused to talk about the film later in his life. A face of a king and a moth. Towards the end of Mothra vs. Godzilla, Godzilla is wading his way towards Iwo Island. Notice that he was only filmed from directly behind, obscuring his face. This was because Haruo Nakajima was actually wearing the King Yagoji suit from King Kong vs. Godzilla. King Yagoji was used once more in the final shot of the web coated Godzilla falling off a cliff and down to the ocean below. This was done because Toho wanted to reuse the Masa Goji suit for the next sequel, Ghidorah, the Three-Headed Monster, which was a last-minute idea suddenly approved by the studio. The effects team wanted to protect their newly made Godzilla suit from deterioration sustained from water, so Masa Goji was substituted for King Yagoji, always keeping its face masked from the camera as audiences would have easily spotted the obvious facial difference between the two suits. Early Ideas for the Zone Siblings In an early conceptual idea for the Zone Fighter series, Zone Angel was able to turn into a giantess to fight the terror beasts alongside her brother, Zone Fighter. Her giant form also would have been equipped with a meteor missile might, the same as Zone Fighter. Had this idea been retained, she would have been the first giant henshin heroine. Hotaru, her human alter ego, would have had a love for pandas. Additionally, she would have been protected by a mascot monster named Pandaran, which was a kind of puppet creature she held close to her arm. When the danger became too great, Pandaran would change into human size to fight the interlopers. In the same early draft, the youngest sibling, Akira, couldn't transform into Zone Junior, as we see him in the series, and he never participated in any battles. In the actual show, the three siblings can change into their Zone form whenever they choose, but in the early draft, they could only transform upon shaking hands with another member of their family. Biollante started with Ultraman Jack. The plot of Godzilla vs. Biollante was born from a story that was selected from a public story writing contest conjured up by producer Tomoyuki Tanaka. 
The chosen entry was written by a dentist named Shinichiro Kobayashi, who used the hypothetical death of his daughter as inspiration for the story. His submission focused on the issues of biotechnology, and a scientist grieving the death of his daughter, whose soul he attempted to keep alive by merging her genes with a plant. His experiment resulted in the creation of a creature that was both human and plant, which would do battle with Godzilla. Biolante wasn't the only plant monster or tokusatsu story written by Mr. Kobayashi. In 1971, when he was just 16 years old, he wrote an early draft for episode 34 of The Return of Ultraman, The Life That Can't Be Forgiven. The plot circled around a scientist who experimented with the fusion of animal cells with plants. These tests ultimately created a plant-animal hybrid named Leogon, who later escapes from the lab and makes his way to a nearby lake, where he soon grows to gigantic proportions. Ultraman Jack shows up to do battle with the mutation, ultimately ending with the monster's death in the lake where he reached his giant size. A true G fan can easily spot the parallels between this episode and Godzilla vs. Biollante. While the episode doesn't explicitly say so, it's been said that the lake where Leogon makes his escape is Lake Ashi, the same lake where Biollante first reaches her rose form 